Hi friends, I'm going to try to make a mold for this um, eyeglass topper that I got. So these are the pair eyeglasses, uh, the prescription, and they have different fronts that you can put on them. So they're magnetic. And so this was um, a pair from the company. So I'm going to try to make a silicone mold to make new, make my own. So um, I didn't have a box that was the size or the shape, so I'm just using the lid from the box that these came in. And um, there's just some other people here making these, lots of other people actually. And um, they recommended a six. So instead of using water, like normally you kind of do when you're making you're making something like this, you can put water in here and then measure how much water it took takes to um, fill it up um, instead of getting all that wet they said you could use rice well I don't have any rice but I do have some beans <laughs> um, I think there is some rice somewhere in the kitchen it's my husband but I don't want to I don't want to hide it from him so we're just going to use some of these old beans that I found so this way we know how much um, How much space the silicone will take up so we know how much silicone to mix. So that's probably good. That should give some um, depth above the so that there's a base to the mold will be molded. So I have here it says milliliters on it so let's see what this translates to. Hopefully, there's not a lot of empty air. <sighs> so that is right at 100 milliliters. Let me make sure. So it's a little bit over that. It's not right at it. Okay. So um, these did come with a slight little curvature in them. Uh, so I'm going to try to use this double stick tape. Hopefully it don't it won't ruin anything. So we're gonna the goal is to try to keep it meshed down to the top of the box. I don't know. some handle molds for the um, geo trays but now that I'm well let's see the tops of the those were um rough so in theory the back side of this will be rough and the back side's the side that attaches to um the frame so you won't really see that and you can sand that roughness down a little bit so i use double stick tape for that as well and it worked great I don't know if this is going to stick as well. I'm trying not to take all day doing this. Okay. So far that's staying down. I don't think it can seep. Oh yeah, I remember now they used 
contact paper. Could do that too. Let's use this um, silicone. I don't want to use my good silicone just yet. Let's use this that we got off of Amazon. I also have really good silicone from CC DIY. But I don't want to use it just yet. Okay, so. Pour A in the measuring cup. Pour the exact same amount of B. Pour A and B into the mixing cup. Mix them thoroughly for three to five minutes till there is no. What that word is. Drawing. Pick a container, not silicone, and place the it's hard to read that. Blank items, the, the mixed item. Pour the flats, point the flat side downwards. Let it stand for 12 hours. Okay. Let me mix this really good. Okay, so we need 100 mils. If I measured right. Um, I think this will hold 120 total. So let's mix it in this. I don't know how much. Hopefully this is uh this is a hundred and twenty the whole thing. So we'll use half of it. That's a little plug. So so I've pre-marked. These, if you're wondering, I go through and I'll make a whole bunch at one time. Three to five minutes. It is quite warm in here. The vents turned off to this room. Oh my. I need to change my battery. My thermostat's out. I think it says it's. 81 watts. Alright, so that's three minutes there. Let's get to stirring. So I don't know how much this bubbles. Of course, you don't want bubbles because um, that will leave a void. Um, hopefully, not up against your glasses this frame. Make it a larger stick. You can already see the bubbles popping. It's pretty warm in here. It's not too bad of a smell with this. I know the one that I used before, and there's a video here on YouTube. Um, you had six minutes to, before it set up, and it literally set up um, on that sixth minute. <laughs> and I barely got it forward. Talk about an adrenaline rush. Oh, there's so many bubbles in here. They just formed themselves. They were doing that for you before I mixed them. So how most mold makers avoid that bubbles is when they use a higher quality silicone. This is super cheap silicone that I got on um, Amazon. And then they also have what's called a pressure pot, which um, it's kind of like a vacuum sealer, and it, it presses out, with the pressure of it, presses out the air. 
so the bubbles go away. So that's how you know you're buying from a high quality mold maker. I don't have a pressure pot. I can't talk my husband into making one. I don't really need one. I don't do enough molds. I'm not really seeing what in here would be mixing together. What should, what should be disappearing other than the bubbles? at three to five minutes. I do believe it's thickening up just a smidge. And I did get the, um, that's three. Let's try to go over. I did get the black UV resin from CCDIY. So I'm super excited to use that. I'm still not sure I love the the toppers because I'm not sh I'm not used to having glasses that have like a bottom frame on them, so I'm not used to seeing that. But I do love the sunglasses, um, the toppers that with the sunglasses on them, um, and I sh the prescription on these is super clear. So um, I enjoy wearing them. Well, it's unfortunate I couldn't figure out what that said. The red ink was um, printed on that black background. Mix with a stick until there is no drawing. I don't know what it says. Downing? Maybe that's a verb. I'm not used to. See, it's still a bit loose. That's still down. Probably could polish that. So if your item that you're molding is shiny, then your um your mold should be shiny too. If you are molding something like, say, these scissors that are not shiny, then um, the surface of your mold won't be shiny either. I feel like the bubbles are kind of coming out. I don't know. Okay. We've definitely been five minutes, so. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see. Pour slow. See the bubbles coming to the top. <laughs> Hope I don't tap so hard that it gets underneath that. So we want to put more silicone in, even though we're covering it, we want the, um, so that was, that was actually too much. So I think a hundred would have been a real good amount. Um, we want the mold to be good and stable. So when we demold it, it doesn't tear up. If I use much more, it would have seeped out over that little, um, inset here. <laughs> Alright, so it takes 12 hours to set up, so we want to leave it nice and flat. Um, I don't want to, I don't know how well that tape is holding it down. I sure don't want that silicone to get up underneath it, so. But I don't want the bubbles. Alright. 
since it's a slower curing the other one I had cured like within an hour maybe that'll give it time for the bubbles to pop especially since it's so warm in here all right so I'll keep you updated and let y'all know tomorrow hi friends I'm back so it's the next day the instruction said 12 hours so it's been over 12 hours so let's see if we can get this out hopefully I can get it out without having to tear the box up you can see there were some bubbles but hopefully they won't um mess up anything so I'd love to be able to get it out without tearing up the box I should have put a layer of um clear like transfer tape down but I was not thinking Some people will make, um, I've seen it for the domino molds, if you don't want to buy your mold. They'll even make a box out of like, or a square or rectangle shape out of um, a cereal box. All right, trying to get to release, I hear it. And then you just tear the box apart. Should have done that, but I didn't. Because I just threw away some honeycomb. Alright, so it looks like it did kind of seep underneath the, the frame. So we're going to see if we can slice that out with hopefully a sharp Let's see if we can trim around this so the um, double stick tape is here and it's just barely over so that was one of the reasons that you would want to put um a layer of vinyl down is so that that vinyl would hold the whole base down and I, I should have done that and I didn't. The silicone went up underneath what I was molding. So now we just need to get it to release it. Sometimes you can use like um, fingernail clippers to kind of trim, trim the edge. Okay, let's see, here we go. So that just peels right off of the so I did kind of put a little bit of grooves in my um, topper but with that knife because that silicone was so thin Let's see if I can get the double stick tape off so next time I'll put a layer of um, just clear, like, um, uh, little contact paper of the duck brand down so that, um, 
so that it'll hold should hold the whole topper so now I just need to clean this off just cut this excess silicone off there's a top layer I need to get rid of here it's real thin hopefully you can see or not so that's just what I'm doing doing surgery on it <laughs> I will keep you updated hi friends I'm back so um this is my mold so far so this was made with the Amazon epoxy a little speck of something there And so, um, the silicone did go over the frames that I had molded, so I had to cut that. I'm hoping it doesn't affect much, because this will be the back side. This will be the side, the side that you see here, will be the side that attaches to the glasses. Um, so the inside of it is what's important. So, I'm hoping that first... First set might um, get everything cleared out, so I just used the lid here to to make the mold. Um, you just saw that, so um, I have some UV resin. This is counterculture. This is the best of I've used. I have their light here, um, and then I also have magnets. So uh, I was first in the researching. They said to buy the six mm by two mm. But I do think this might be too thick. Um, upon further inspection of this, these are Wanda's. You can see there's almost like two special magnets. So these are a little bit taller than I thought they would be. Maybe we can see that. <laughs> these are big square magnets see so I'm just wondering what the depth is it's right at it at the depth of that frame so those were the 2 mm so um, upon further research um, I found these and these may be 1mm. Let's see if it says it. Of course, Amazon. Um, there's a sticker on top. It doesn't say. Ooh, come back. So these are definitely thinner what these look like they stick and I mean it's thinner for sure okay so we're gonna use these is there a certain way yes so you have to be careful the polarity. So where's the sharpie? We're gonna mark the side that needs to be up. Hopefully that will stay long enough for me to make this mold. Also, um, hopefully there's no magnetic things in the UV lamp. <laughs> when I go to put this on, I don't want the um, magnets to like fly up out of the mold. <laughs> okay, so this is the back side. This is the front side. So these came from Pear, the actual company. Um, I was going to show you these. These are the um, these are rose gold. So these are these make your prescription glasses, sunglasses, so cool. 
Never had any prescription sunglasses, and I do now. So let me get those out of the way. So this was like a silver glitter. But the rose gold ones, the actual see-through is, is rosy too. So that was pretty cool. Um, I really like these. They fit my face really good. I'm not sure if I care for the look so much. But they're really comfortable. They're really lightweight compared to these that I bought at Walmart this December. Um, both of them have blue light technology in them. This one looks like it might have a little bit more. Um, but this one also has like a scratch resistance on it that I don't think this one does. So, um, and then I have some ultra fine glitters. So this one is from Mr. Nola's Glitter, and uh, this one's Tiger's Blood. So super fine. This one is from Blue Spring Bling. She is uh, shut down at the moment, but um, this one is Rose Gold. And then um, she had a big sale as she was going out. This one is Unicorn Blush. Look how gorgeous that one is. And this one's Shimmer Rose. So I don't know. Almost wanting, oh, that's the same one. Um, almost wanting to do these light ones. Okay, so now I need, I don't know how much it's going to take. Um, I could fill it with water, but then that would need to dry. So, I could guesstimate. Hmm, we're going to fill it with water and dry it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I have two 30 milliliter mLs of water here. This is just tap water. So I'm going to fill this and see how much it takes. It looks like this will gauge as well. Three mLs. Um, but I have to make sure I can dry this out completely before... So these little pipettes just came from Amazon. Kind of hard to. Okay, so. Probably gonna take a lot more than I was thinking it would. So I didn't want to waste any. Alright, so that was three. So this will be six. And so I did make this mold with just the cheap, some cheap silicone from Amazon. Okay, so. So that was really just six. And it's um it's pretty full. Alright, so once I know I like to do this, I'll going to use this um casting silicone from counterculture. So it's two. So I need two. Get rid of this water. So mixing eight should be plenty. Let's see if we can get this good and dried out. All 
Resin and water do not mix well. And you also don't want to put any heat on these silicone molds. You can spritz alcohol on them. Um, but if you do heat, like a flame, especially a flame or a torch, um, depending on the type of silicone you are using, you can ruin your mold. It will melt it. I have done it before. Even though I was told not to. I did it anyway. So one thing that, um, one of the reasons I made this with the cheaper Amazon silicone was because um, I'm scratching this inner surface as I'm doing all this. So hopefully I won't do that on my good mold. This is kind of the tester mold. All right, let's see if I see any water. Uh, earlier in this video was it 120 mils yeah of silicone to make the mold and so it's nice and thick even though the frame isn't that thick you want your mold to be thick to hold up so that it doesn't tear okay so now the hard part we only need I also have black resin how cool is that they sent me some and I have bought some Okay, so we only need about eight. Let's see how much is left in this one. So I have this little, um, so there's 7.5. I like to kind of mark it with my Sharpie so I can get down eye level with it. So we're going to go right between that seven and that ten. Now, thinking about it, I'm probably not going to get all of it in this little pipette, so I might want to go closer to the 10. And I could try to do this in layers, too. This is a total experiment and I have a bigger bottle of this <laughs> because it's amazing stuff. Okay, so I think we're going to do the unicorn blush first. Of course, I don't know how much to add. You don't want to add so much that you lose the integrity of your resin. Some people say it's a 10% ratio um, I know eyeballing it's kind of hard to figure out what 10% is oh, that's so pretty it's like rainbowy See how sparkly that is? We'll have it, um, another light on. So I'm holding it up to see how opaque it is on the wooden stick. So now I could add some alcohol ink to help kind of tint the actual resin, or I could add more glitter. It's a pink. Oh, 
pearl. Hmm, let's just add more glitter. Choices, choices. Remembered I ordered a little glitter spoon. I don't remember where I put it. I need to play in here more often, I guess. Okay, so this is UV resin. So this is different than resin that has UV inhibitors in it. This resin cures under a UV lamp. So this one's going to be a little bit see-through. It's going to be super gorgeous. And I have seen where they paint, they're painting the backs of them um, to help uh, with some of the opaqueness. So that could be an option too. Okay, so I've got my plug in here. So this UV lamp has little feet that come out. And if you need to raise your mold, you can use something like a box. So here's my mold. And we have to figure out how to put the magnets in that I took off and don't know where I put. Where did I put them, guys? <laughs> They're not on here. Alright, I'm going to make two more magnets. <clears throat> so I just had a thought with me marking them with Sharpies. Is if this glitter is mixture is kind of um, transparent, you probably will be able to see the Sharpie marks. So what I'm going to do is put this tape, scotch tape on it. Because I saw someone in one of the groups do that. And then they tape it here to suspend it in the mold. So we know which side is down. Uh, actually, is that right? Yeah. No. Think about it. The tape set needs to be on this side. Flip it over. Working backwards here. Okay. Those out of the way so we don't get those messy. All right, we need to stir that back up. <clears throat> and we could try to pour it in. See how well it moves. This glitter is so pretty. Helps if you have like a um, silicone 
cup which you can kind of squeeze helps direct the resin where you want it to go all right so that 10 was plenty had some left I'm gonna kind of bang this down in case there's any air bubbles like there's an air bubble there I believe so this whole thing is kind of bulging that's not good we need to flatten out so we're gonna have to shimmy it off this is where you want some glues probably gonna make a mess so you can sand it down by hand after you're done if you'd like but we're gonna try to take some of the bulk off oh there's a big bubble we'll be right back I cannot find my toothpicks I cleaned up my crafter room and I guess I moved everything so we need to pop that little bubble there so that it's not a weakness well you don't want to pop there you go make sure the glitter might have been a bubble over there too so some of the glitter doesn't look as thick right there Not really trying to worry about reusing this, I just don't want it to cure on the glasses frame. And you can also kind of chip off if there's anything kind of hanging on concerned here. I think it's okay though. We shall see. Okay, so now we gotta figure out the magnet. Because the magnets need to be inset but the tape needs to hold and we just made the biggest mess everywhere. So the UV resin will cure. Oh, it's kind of displacing a little bit around the magnet. And the reason we're trying to hold it up is so that it doesn't sink to the bottom. In theory, <laughs> sticking to my magnet table. Oop. We want it to kind of stay flush with the back. Okay. This is as good as it's going to get for this first try. Alright, so this takes two minutes. Let's see what happens. 
Oops, just barely. Crap. Here, there we go. So that's 60 seconds, and you can actually press and hold it down. Someone showed in the counterculture group. If you press and just hold it for a few seconds, it'll just stay on permanently. How cool is that? So I have another lamp that I bought with a fingernail set and it just does not work near as good. The counterculture lamp is amazing and the counterculture, counterculture UV resin is amazing too. So if I wanted to do something to kind of bring it up closer to the lamp, I could, but it would, it needs to be completely the full length of that so that it's not bending the integrity of the mold any. One to two minutes. So we'll do two minutes. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And you can always cure it for longer. It won't hurt anything. So this was normal resin. And um, I didn't babysit it, so see all those bubbles that came on the back? So that's why UV resin is, is kind of preferable because you can um, cure it really fast so that you're not having to babysit and um, I feel like your fingernails and get them done quicker. So this is one eighth of an inch thick. Um, it's what it says on the bottle. Um, actually a quarter in of an inch per layer. So this is definitely smaller than a quarter of an inch. Super. I don't know where my ruler went. <laughs> Here it is hanging. See my dog chewed on it. Oh yeah, this is only like, maybe not even two tenths. So we are not over the thickness at all. That's, that's a plus. Alright. I wonder what some of this glitter would look like in the black resin. make sure it's done. The black resin will be called a make some Halloween. You can do like half black and half orange or do them like top to bottom black and then orange. You can also use the epoxy sculpt to try to add on and then make another mold with like bat wings or something. I've seen some of the other ladies do that. In all honesty, the casting silicone is pretty expensive, so buying a mold from someone might be a better route to go um, after you make it, and then if you don't make it correctly, like this one wasn't perfect, and then you've wasted that money trying to make it yourself. Of course, you have to buy the glasses and all that fun stuff. Alright, so it's still a little bit bendy looking. Oh no. Yeah, it's still moving. We're gonna keep curing it. I also flip it over and try from the back side. But it may have made this one mold a little bit too thick for that UV to penetrate. I might need to raise it up, get it closer to the lamp. It's a little bit closer to the lights now. So on the counterculture web 
uh, Facebook group for the artists. Um, someone asked about the direct sunlight curing it, and they do not recommend using direct sunlight to cure this. I'm not sure the exact reason. Just sharing my research. And you can hold it too, but that you run the risk of accidentally like losing your hold and smashing the top. Let's see. So you see it's still moving a little bit, so I don't know if that's a lack of curing or if that's just because it's so thin. So we're going to try this. Cure it a little bit more. Better safe than sorry. So the bigger the glitter you use, the um, more spaces you could get in the front. Like if the glitter blocks the resin, so you might possibly lay a layer of clear in there, a thin, thin layer, and cure that, and then put your chunkier glitter mix in and cure that. And that way, you'll have a nice uh, clear coat on the top. You could also paint the UV resin on and cure it like you would your fingernail. Um, but that's kind of pain, time staking, paint staking time task um, and it might not end up looking as sharp as you'd hoped it would. So once you get it out of the mold you can also cure it some more. One of the reasons I picked these Wanda's is uh, because they do have a, such a large frame around them. I felt it was easier to work with especially over here it popped out quite a bit and gave you some space. Also one of my friends wanted me to make some, <laughs> so I, I bought them. They do have a return policy. So we're taking the tape off. Probably could have taken that off after like the first 30 seconds. Didn't think about it. Need to keep baking that on there. Let's see where the adhesive stuck to my mold. All right, so let's demold this. So don't worry about those little crispies. <laughs> we will take care of those in a little bit. Really just focused on function right now. Come on. So that whole part is because the way I dr drug the popsicle stick over it, it was kind of solid, but hey. Look at that. This is better than we have done. And look, you can't see the magnet. So, um, I am so happy right now. So now we want to just try to trim this off. I was looking for my little cricket scissors. Here they are. They're super pointy. So let's get this out of the way. Can put this up. We're done with those for now. That's cured. So now we just need to clean it up. See if it um first we'll see if it sticks to the glasses. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Can you believe that? Look at that. I did it. <laughs> such an amazing feeling you know when you could spend two hundred dollars to make something that you could have bought for 20. 
So now we're just cleaning this up. And so this is the front part that, that will be outer. So all this kind of cruddy stuff, these will be on the inside of the glasses. So nobody will really see that part. That's what um, I really like about this mold, these frames. So there are people that are 3D printing these. I don't have a 3D printer. I want one, but I don't think I would use it like I should. So this is super light, like thinner than that fingernail. See, it's just tearing right off. You could actually use fingernail clippers to help trim some of that. And if I'd used the pipette and been a little bit more um, clean when I was pouring it, um, then of course a lot of this cleanup wouldn't even be needed. So yeah, that's just flaking right off because it's so thin. It's a little bit thicker here in this corner where that tape was. And you can also, um, like now if you want, if I wanted to, uh, it looks like I did get a couple of little bubbles. When I pushed that in, it um, pushed air up and caused a couple little bubbles. So next time I do that, I will know to look for that. So I'll show a picture of me with these on. And if I make some more, I'll put that picture of them too. Here we go. Oh. And some people say that they're not sitting all the way so you could possibly kind of take a um, heat gun and warm it up kind of mash it there let it cool where you're holding it so that it will kind of conform to the frame a little bit more because i did notice that the wandas have a slight little bend in them but uh, you can even stack mold on top of mold see on there as you can see they're magnets, but on these you can't. So, how cool are those? Such a pretty color. Late night working. So, I tried to scan this into my flatbed scanner on my computer, and all of the little speckles showed up, and it ended up tracing out all of the speckles and the glitter. And it was a big pain, and I had to weld a whole bunch of stuff, so I ended up getting it right. But the final cut um, that it did was still too wide. So now I am physically tracing this, coloring it in so that when I scan it in, it should scan in as one solid piece. And hopefully the size, will, size and aspect ratio will stay the same. So um, this is one way to do it, since I don't have a 3D... Um, scanner mapper. Also, um, because this isn't a flat image, when I scanned it, you can you can see here and the printer shot too. See that shadow? So uh, it picks up part of that shadow, and, and at the end of the day, when you composite all of it together, some of that shadow does become part of the frame, and um, so it's hard to get that separated. So doing this hand drawing like this might work. I'll keep you updated.
here's a different pattern. It's bats and witches for Halloween. And so I printed that out and put that on top of some red glitter toppers. I do still need to seal this, but I think I'm going to end the video here because this is um, already an hour long. And so I'm going to do bits and pieces of these processes in different videos. Hopefully I can go live on my channel. So if you have any questions, feel free to catch those videos and ask in the comments. I'll do my best to respond. And as always, the links to the supplies are in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.